Ishmael, thank you very much for joining us. First of all, can you state what is in the UN agreement with Bangladesh when it comes to this island, based on your knowledge of it? Thanks so much, Robin. Thanks for having me. Um, so, uh, Fortify Rights, myself, we have seen the document and, we, and we've uh, ass assessed it. The document itself is basically an agreement between the UN Refugee Agency and the government of Bangladesh to allow UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency, and other humanitarian actors access to the island to try and provide support to uh, those Rohingya refugees on the island. There's around 20,000 uh, refugees on the island at the moment. Uh, it does say that the government of Bangladesh will provide unhindered access to the UN and humanitarian partners to provide that uh, those very, very needed services to the Rohingya refugees on the island. However, the key concern that we have is that it also almost essentially codifies uh, restrictions on the freedom of movement, particularly those who are on the island uh, and their ability to return to mainland camps. We've documented human rights violations over the past uh, one year on the island of those refugees on the island. Um, and one of the key concerns that they have put to us is that they feel like it's a prison. They can't get off. They're not allowed to return to the mainland. And that's the key concern that we have looking at the document uh, as it stands. So, so what is Fortify Rights, your organization, asking the UN to do about this no free travel clause? Essentially, both the UN Refugee Agency and the government of Bangladesh, they need to make a commitment that the rights of Rohingya refugees will be fully respected. Uh, and that means that if there are Rohingya refugees that are on the island that do not wish to be there, they should be permitted to return to the mainland. At the moment, it does not give that guarantee. And that's the main concern uh, and the main call. The other call is that this document, as you say, CNN has not seen it. Um, it is being kept restricted, private. It should be made public. And essentially, you know, one of the key issues that, that the Rohingya population have faced, uh, particularly the, you know, over one million Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh uh, who have fled atrocity crimes, genocide in Myanmar, is they're often left out of these decisions that affect their daily lives and their rights. So this should be made public. And those that have uh, a stake in this, uh, especially Rohingya refugees themselves, should be able to look at that and be able to have input in this uh, and, and have some control or some impact or, or input on the decisions that are affecting their lives. How many more refugees are, are set to be moved there or travel there? And, and what is what are the conditions like there on the ground? Can you give us more detail? Yeah, as I said, from the very inception, this has been sort of a human rights misadventure. Uh, about 20,000 are on the island at the moment. The government of Bangladesh have said that they want to move around 100,000. Um, as I said, we've been documenting and speaking to Rohingya refugees on the island over the past year uh, who have been moved back and forth. And they've stressed that the conditions that they are living under are not the conditions that the government of Bangladesh told them that they would be uh, experiencing there. So there is uh, restrictions on freedom of movement on the island. People are basically restricted to their specific areas, not free to move around. Um, we've documented beatings and arrests of refugees who have tried to move around freely on the island. Um, I don't know if you've seen pictures of it, but it's basically, they look very much like military or prison barracks surrounded by barbed wire, CCTV. Uh, there's a heavy security presence on the island, including the Bangladesh Navy. About 200 or so, at least 200 people have been arrested over the last uh, month or two, trying to escape the island. Uh, and dozens have died uh, trying to take these sort of very perilous journeys on boats, uh, paying traffickers to try to get across. Also, the other concerns that Rohingya refugees tell us about is lack of access to livelihoods, uh, education, um, health care. And these are all things that the UN refugee agency's presence on the island could really help with, you know, and there could be a lot of support that is necessary on the island. But as I said, the issue here is that it needs to be free uh, and voluntary uh, stay on the island. And at the moment, as I said, the, the, the chief concern here is that all of those, pretty much all that we've spoken to, so they don't want to be there. So there's another 80,000 or so that the Bangladesh government says they want to move to the island. All of those transfers need to be voluntary and they need to be informed, fully informed of what the situation is on the island before they're moved. Um, this should have taken place at the beginning. It's what the UN asked for. It's what we've asked for and other human rights organizations. No one should have been moved to the island until those protection needs, the humanitarian needs, and also the safety and security of, of the individuals on the island, given its uh, status in the Bay of Bengal and, the, and, and cyclones. Those things need to be agreed upon beforehand and ensured uh, before anyone or anyone else should be moved to the island. Ishmael Wolf, thank you very much for bringing us uh, your, your first-hand experience of what you've seen in this document. Appreciate it. Thank you. So,